Hi, welcome to the Dino Fab Lab. Today, my buddy Nikola Tesla and I are going to do a complete teardown on an iRobot Roomba 4000 series. I'm going to be showing you what's inside this thing and how you can use it to make your own robot. Okay, for starters, we need to pull the covers off from this thing, and that has to be done in a specific order. You need to pull off the sensor cover before you can pull off the main cover. So let's flip the device over and start taking some screws out. So we're going to take four screws out of this. We can just set those aside in our little screw tray here as we go. It's kind of hard to get out of the holes, so the easiest way, unless you have a magnetic tip screwdriver, is to just tip it over, give it a good shake, all the screws will fall out. And the cover lifts off. And then we have a connector right in here that connects to the sensor for the docking station and for the virtual wall. We need to disconnect that so we can take the cover off and set it aside. Just give a tug on the plug and off it comes. Now that we have that out of the way, we'll be able to lift off the main cover. The main cover is held on with about uh, eight screws. There's two by the battery tray. There's two more down inside here by the brush mechanism. There's one in that corner, one in this corner. So we need to take those out. Then there's two more back here. Let's get those out of the way. And at this point, we can go ahead and pull off the dirt box that holds everything on. Just push down on the button on the top, give it a slide. We'll set that aside and get it out of our way. The brushes and the holder, just push the two yellow tabs, lift that out. The brushes just lift right out. They're really easy. While we're at this point, I can show you the, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is the uh, dirt detector. I haven't actually verified that yet, but it's just a little sensor that picks up on particulates flying past the, uh, the brush. And then once it does that, the Roomba circles around because it's thinking that there's dirt there and it needs to clean everything a little bit better. Okay, so we've got those screws removed. There's two more to go. One of them is here by the wheel on this side. The other one is over here, right in there. And that's the last two that hold down the top cover, so let's get those out of there. Okay, that should be all of our screws. I think there's, uh, yeah, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Eight screws total, and the cover lifts off. Front. There's a few little clips you'll hear release. Just give it a good tug, it'll pop off. And there's also a connector for all of these switches on the top that needs to be disconnected at the motherboard, right there. Let's just give that a pull. That's out of our way, we'll set the cover aside. It's pretty common to open these up and find all kinds of crud inside. This one's covered with mostly lots of dust, as you can see. Looks like it's been roving around on the moon. Uh, just basically someone's house. But I have taken these apart and found virtually an entire carpet in here. There's places and little pockets where this kind of stuff can build up. Uh, not a good idea to be breathing this, so you might want to take it outside and blast it all off with some compressed air if you don't have that. Just a simple old paintbrush does a pretty good job brushing things out of the way. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up here now, so let's go ahead and start pulling stuff apart. Some of these units have hot glue all over the place that holds the uh, wire harness in position. Some of them don't. The ones that have the hot glue are a, kind of a bit of a pain to take all the wiring apart. You have to be careful because it's pretty tenacious stuff, but be patient with it all and, and you'll get it all apart. So this whole front piece is kind of connected in with the motherboard in that the sensor pokes right into it there. This is an infrared uh, transmitter and receiver and this bumps up against a wall and interrupts the beam and that's what triggers it to sense that it's bumped into something there or on the other side bumped in there. Um, the rest of this sensor bar in the front are four uh, edge sensors and those are located in these recesses. Again it's a infrared transmitter and receiver. It 
sends a signal down to the floor, bounces back up, and if there's no floor there, then the thing backs up and moves away. So let's start taking some of this stuff apart. The first thing you want to do is get the front bar and the motherboard out of the way. So the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and just grab this harness here that has all of the umbilicals that run to the front and just start pulling these plugs out. And they only go back in in one position, so later on it's pretty easy to figure out where everything went on the motherboard if you want to do some hacking and actually utilize these sensors. Because you can power up the motherboard and use some of the stuff that's on it. In fact, I'll show you in a while. That's exactly what I did to run the motors on the Urban Rover bot that I built. So now we've got those wires pulled off. We'll get them pulled up, get the hot glue things out of the way here. And there's two screws here that are the pivot points for this front end. Let's take those out. Put those aside in our little screw container. Most of this stuff comes apart with just a couple of screwdrivers. You might need a number one and number two Phillips. Let's pull these springs off and get those out of the way. These are really nice to save too. I mean, they're just good springs to use, right? Save everything. It's all worth saving. Recycle stuff. Go find electronics, tear it apart, and uh, save some money and keep stuff out of the landfill at the same time. Kind of cool. There's a couple more screws on the ends here that hold on these little plastic things that do more than just hold the motherboard in. It's kind of a multi-purpose piece of stuff there. Um, as you can see this one's got a spring attached to it that tensions the motor, makes it swing towards the floor. So let's get those out of the way. You need a smaller screwdriver for these screws. Now once those are out of there the motherboard will lift out so there's more plugs to disconnect. Let's get those pulled off. These are the ones that run to the motors. They have wheel sensor wires and the uh, power wires going to them. The wheel sensors get dirty in these things. We'll show that later too. I'll take a motor apart before the end of this video and you'll see what's going on inside there. Okay, we've got just about everything pulled off here. A small ground wire to get out of the way. Now we can start lifting out the motherboard and the sensor bar kind of all at the same time. It'll all kind of sort of fall apart away from the thing. The easiest way to get these out is push in and then lift it out of the sensor and then it's separate from everything else. There is a couple of sensors here that are wired in. Get those out of the way. There's the sensor bar whole thing right there. You can kind of keep that intact. You can uh, hack that later if you want. Utilize these edge sensors in another robot. So we'll keep all that stuff. There's a micro switch on this wheel on the front so that when the thing gets picked up off the floor that little micro switch right in there gets triggered and turns off the mechanism so the motors don't run, the brushes stop running. There's a few switches in here that do that. There's a couple back here by the motors those little turquoise colored switches. <clears throat> now the motherboard comes out and there is a cord that runs all the way back here to the serial port and iRobot put a serial port in there to be able to upload firmware to the uh, processor. It's a Motorola processor and I've been told by someone that used to work at Roomba at iRobot that uh, it is possible to get in there and, and use that thing, but it's, um, you mentioned something about it's an, in, an encrypted type of upload or whatever. Didn't quite catch all that in the email, but basically what it means is it's a little difficult to use that processor yourself. He said you could get a processor from a few places like maybe SparkFun or a programmer that would connect to it. Uh, it would cost probably $100 or more. But what I like to do is just use the motherboard and connect an Arduino to it. 